Hello everyone and welcome to a new video about Raven. In this one, we'll look at a malware example where Raven helps connecting data that is sent to the network back to where it was generated in the code and also using the Python API, we'll extract information from the trace and try to generalize the knowledge we have to get even more insight about what the malware is doing. Okay, so that's what our trace contains. Uh, we have a DLL loader here called explorer.exe. It loads the DLL, then slips for 60 seconds, and at the end it just stops. My entry point here is going to be uh, the network because I know that the malware talks to the network. So the first step um, is dumping the pickup file using the uh, shipped uh, Python script. And those are the transition number where packets are being generated, and those are the related uh, memory addresses. And if I open that using Wireshark, um, I can get an idea of what happened. We talked to google.com through a weird looking URL that actually returns a 404 error and then to a second URL. For that example, we'll focus on that weird looking URL, which is generated at 260. So that's the transition number I'm interested in. I'll go to that location in the trace, that moment of of time and actually I'll use the second buffer which is bigger so more likely to contain what I'm interested in. And yes, here it is. Here is uh, my weird looking URL. As you may have been, uh, as you may be accustomed to now, I'll taint that backward to get an idea of where that data is coming from. And actually it's going through quite a few transformation and that's to be expected because yeah, that's being built at some point so there may be a lot of string concatenation and everything. So I won't look through all the results here. I'll go straight to the end where of course I encounter system stuff because that's where the DLA was loaded. Uh, so that's the first group here in one one something and then a jump in transition number indicates that something different is going on. And that's uh, second group there is going to be more interesting. Double clicking here, I end up straight in what looks like a decryption routine because a simple one because there's just a XOR, but uh, that's the first word of my URL, if you remember. So I have a, the assumption here that this is probably a decryption routine. I'll go to the start of it and just see if it's uh, called somewhere else in the trace. And it actually is. It's called like 61 times throughout the entire trace, so maybe I decrypted more than one word. Um, as you may be used to now, uh, using the synchronization with IDA, I can uh, statically anal analyze what's going on. And um, it's actually fairly easy to see that the string there is returned through RAX. And yeah, that's the return string. It's actually a buffer that contains a string or a pointer to the string if the string is bigger than 16 characters. So going through the results, uh, I can go to the end and look at the various words that were decrypted, switch, article, then the next word is going to be status. And if you remember that those were the three words used for the URL, switch, article, status. So now I want obviously to do that um, automatically using the Python API instead of doing that by hand. So that's what I have here. I have a small script. I connect to the trace. I search for that same code location, and for all the results, get the return value. I have winnie.net.dll, so it indicates that maybe the net code was dynamically loaded, a few symbols, then other words, dot coms, maybe URLs. So yeah, that's interesting stuff. And actually, when I was uh, iterating through all the results, I also extracted the key address um, which helps me understand how many keys are used throughout the trace. And um, you can see at the end, there's a grand total of four different keys used throughout the entire trace. So that gives me even more information. I have the four key, at least key addresses here, uh, used to decrypt things. So I could use that and kind of brute force uh, those keys onto the um, input DLL and try to extract even more strings. To do that, I have two inputs. First is the DLL itself, and then a moment in time in my trace where all these addresses are properly mapped so that I can read them because those are just the addresses of the keys and not the keys themselves. So this uh, moment in time is just found manually. It's a, it's a fairly simple operation. So I iterate through the keys, read them, and then decrypt the entire 
uh, buffer, which is in my case fairly simple with, because it's just a XOR operation and with some logic to reset the key every time I encounter a new string or a potential string. So I ran that and um, learned that the first key is just a no op and the th uh, three keys uh, then are interesting. The first one is related to network stuff, a network uh, symbol names and buffers. The second one is about URLs and other words. And the third one is um, mostly related to maybe a word, uh, a dictionary of words. Okay, so we found that this was a fairly interesting example of Raven because you can see it helps providing different kind of information. The first one is really the tainting engine allows you to connect data sent to the network back to where it was generated. And that's, as as you saw, there are quite a few operation happening on that data. So uh, doing that by hand can be really bothersome and there uh, Raven just gives you a straightforward answer. And the second thing is uh, using the trace data, it can help with your static analysis because it gives you information. And also you can extract things from there and just um, get more and more information, which is going to help you with understanding what the malware is trying to do. Okay, uh, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.